It's been quite a long time since we heard from Spin Launch, the company trying to fling payloads into space. So far, they've completed some suborbital tests. However, the company envisions using an orbital accelerator to spin a payload thousands of miles per hour within a vacuum chamber before releasing it into the atmosphere. This being said, they have been very few updates from the company in general, and even longer since we heard about the orbital accelerator and its location. To add to this, the company for years now has been looking for the perfect site to start building a much larger orbital variant, but has run into consistent issues. Attempts in Hawaii and Alaska, for example, proved to be much harder than the company anticipated, and very little has been said regarding their current plan. Here I'll go more in depth into the current state of spin launch, the problem with finding a location, what the future could look like, and more. For a long time now, and still today, on Spin Launch's website, they state that the first orbital launch site is in final selection in a soon-to-be-disclosed location in a coastal region of the United States. We are closely collaborating with the FAA and other governing agencies for launch site licensing. Based on the fact that this exact question prompt has been up for over a year now, it needs to be taken with a grain of salt. Also, for reference, the company began looking for a good site over five years ago. Specifically, starting back in 2018, Spin Launch thought they had found a good location in Hawaii. At this point, the company began looking for specific locations on the main island and other areas. Due to Hawaii's proximity to the equator, it offers a lot of benefits to companies trying to reach orbit. Around that time, Spin Launch also pointed out that Hawaii is one of six states they are considering for a future location. Not long after showing interest, two company representatives for Spin Launch went to a scheduled meeting with the local community of a specific location of interest. The goal here was for the Spin Launch team to explain the system and the goal of the company, along with answering any questions the public had. Unfortunately for Spin Launch, this community meeting was far less productive than expected and was primarily people yelling and interrupting each other. A lot of concerns were brought up, some more warranted than others. This included safety concerns, how big the accelerator would be, its impact on the environment, what happens if stored rocket fuel ignited during transport or at the station, sound, and much more. By the end of the hour-long meeting, it was clear to the company that Hawaii was going to be a tough location to get support, and the specific location was not an option going forward. Not long after, Spin Launch ultimately scrapped plans for the specific project. In terms of the concern of sound, Spin Launch highlights that while this process does create a sonic boom, it doesn't have a higher sonic impact than a regular rocket. During launch, a short duration sonic boom is projected outwards and upwards along the trajectory of the launch vehicle. Spin Launch says they use industry standard methodologies to evaluate and comply with the Federal Aviation Administration's requirements for noise profile analysis, the same as traditional rocket launches. The orbital accelerator is expected to spin up to 5,000 miles per hour prior to releasing the vehicle. To date, Spin Launch has conducted tests over six times the speed of sound. Even though this was not a great start for the company, they continue to look for viable locations. After all, they needed a site with plenty of nearby water and ideally close proximity to the equator to help with the launch process. A few years later in 2020, Spin Launch visited Unalaska, Alaska as a potential satellite launch site location. In this case, Spin Launch identified a specific bay as a possible location to build a large centrifuge to launch satellites into low Earth orbit. The spot was near the southernmost point of Alaska in a very remote location. In 2021, the recorded population of Unalaska was just over 4,000 people. Here, the project would likely require building a road down the local trail. Notes from the city's planners department suggest this 20-acre site would sit along one of the community's most popular hiking trails and a historic trading path. A 2020 mock-up from city email showed an approximate location for the proposed Spin Launch satellite launch site. Here you can see the site between the bay and city below. Representatives from the company visited Unalaska in September 2020 and gave a presentation to city officials about their plans to work with the community. A lot of local figures, including the Unalaska Director of Public Utilities, Director of Public Works for Unalaska, and more, all thought Spin Launch would provide good economic opportunity for the region. However, it wasn't all great in terms of opinions. The port's director commented, It sounds like Unalaska may provide Spin Launch the ideal location, but Spin Launch has little or nothing long-term to offer in return. She also mentioned that she asked questions about the long-term opportunities for Unalaska, such as job opportunities, housing development, and an influx of students into the school. She says Spin Launch was unable to provide satisfying responses, and she left the September 2020 meeting with more questions than answers. At this point, while communication between the company and the city began to fade in early 2021, the startup says Unalaska is still in the running. For years now, Spin Launch has conveyed that they are close to picking and revealing the future location of its orbital accelerator. However, it seems that this process has become a bit harder than expected with the combination of cost, FAA approval, and local support, just to name a few. This being said, Spin Launch has made some more progress in the past couple of years that supports a future launch site. Spin Launch started development in early 2015. 
Less than two years later, Spin launched her past the record for fastest rotational tip speeds and subsequently conducted hundreds of launches in its headquarters-based laboratory. In October 2021, the first launch of the suborbital system validated the technology and marked a key milestone. Most recently, they launched multiple payloads, including one for NASA, during a test that provided promising results. Since then, we have heard very little from the company. A few months ago, it was reported that Span Launch is conducting a feasibility study in Western Australia. They're trying to determine if two areas of land could be used as a launch site for its orbital accelerator. Spin Launch said it had identified a number of possible launch sites globally based on operational effectiveness, safety and compliance, environmental impact, and market accessibility. It also said there were several locations in Australia that met the criteria but declined to comment further. However, the Department of Planning, Lands, and Heritage said they had received an application for a two-year license to use the land for feasibility studies and were conducting stakeholder referrals with the local government. In other words, it's possible that Spend Launch is getting close to picking an actual location, at which point we could start to see them attempt this unique launch process. To get a better idea of what Spend Launch is pitching to various states and communities, we can take a closer look at the design and size of an orbital accelerator. The best place to start is with the massive vacuum chamber. The vacuum chamber is a steel cylinder measuring around 300 feet or 91 meters in diameter. Within this low pressure environment, it allows the tether to spin at nearly 5,000 miles per hour with minimal aerodynamic heating and drag. Next, you have the hypersonic tether in the very center. Made of high strength carbon fiber, the tether is spun up to launch speeds by central electric drive. This electric drive consists of dual AC motors that feed to a hydrodynamic radial bearing assembly. The launch vehicle, which is intended to carry the payload through the atmosphere and into orbit, is attached to the very end of the tether. After the payload has been spun up to extremely high speeds, it's time to release it. On the orbital accelerator, once launch speed is reached, an automatic sequence releases the launch vehicle through the exit tunnel with high precision. This leads to the final main component of the system, the exit tunnel. In this case, ultra-high speed airlock doors that operate faster than the blink of an eye prevent the vacuum chamber from repressurization after the launch vehicle is released. This process is intended to help Spin Launch continue to launch very frequently with limited work in between. Ideally, in the future, they can keep this chamber pressurized all day and launch every couple of hours. With the payload released, it shoots up into the air at thousands of miles per hour. Not long after, its protective shell is separated and a small rocket ignites to put the payloads into orbit. Spin Launch is still working to find the perfect orbital accelerator location. While they're having a bit of trouble, they seem to be continuing the work and could end up with an actual site within the near future. We will have to wait and see how it progresses and the impact it has on the space industry. Thank you very much for watching.